Hey friends. Um, so I'm going to get right into this message today. These things that I have um, to share with you is what my husband Dan um, shared with our staff meeting today. Hi Tiffany. Our staff meet, uh, our staff at church in um, Tuesdays we have staff meeting, but uh, we just talked about what what the prophetic time is, what we're what we're living in right now, what we're coming into, the season that we're coming into, and the amazing things that God has planned. And so, um, what He had to say was a lot of confirmation for things that God is speaking to me as well, and um, it's very timely. So if you you don't necessarily know this, but my husband has a, um, like hears from God with a feeling like discern, discerning. He can discern what's happening. And so he can feel, um, or sense like the timing of things. So I'm more of a visionary person. Maybe you are too. Um, I see things or feel like God is showing me things ahead of time. I can get the, the vision, the big picture vision, kind of the long range vision almost. Um, and, but Dan will hear the things that are happening or about to happen right now. So he will, he has that kind of timing sense. So when he said these things, I know that it's, um, very important for the body of Christ to hear what he had to say and to, to know that God is saying this, um, to, to the entire body of Christ right now. Important for all of us to know because it's an important for you to know what to do, okay? To know what to do. So the times that we're living in, and you can look these up in the Bible. This is the time we're living in right now. The five, the 10 bridesmaids, five wise and five foolish, we're living in that time prophetically. It's time to light our lamps and be the, be the wise ones, light our lamps and move forward because it is harvest time. So we just went through a big test, right? In the church, uh, the virus, the coronavirus, the, co the COVID virus, um, and the shutdowns, the quarantines, and all of that was more of a test for the church and more of a wake-up call for the church. Um, also for the world, you know, because it affected the entire world, right? But we know as a church that it was a test getting us ready for something. It was waking us up for something in order to take some action. So this is the season that we're living in is what kind of action? This is what you need to know. The next test is coming. <laughs> But the next test that is coming is not for the church anymore because we should be ready already. We should be prepared. The next test that's coming is going to be for the world. It's coming to the world and on the world. And not the church, but we have been tested. And therefore, we have the answer for them. If they are in fear, still in fear, or in fear again, it is harvest time. So we should be ready right now for the next test that's coming. And I don't know when that is, but it's going to bring in a huge harvest into God's kingdom. So this is good news. All right. Um, so here we are where prophetically we're in that time when Jesus was crucified and there were three days where he was in the tomb and the Christians at that time, the believers they and the disciples, they were unsure of what was happening. They were like, wait a minute. And, and everybody looking at them was saying, oh, I guess you were wrong. I guess, you know, um, all hope is lost. And some of them had lost hope. And they there was a short period of time where um, it looked hopeless and it looked impossible. What? God had promised to them. So here we are in that in that similar period of time, a short period of time, but just know that the promise of God is still coming 
and a harvest will come in. It's going to be so huge. The harvest is so ripe and so ready. People in the world are so ready to, to know Jesus. Huge miracles are going to break out and many people are going to run to Jesus. The, the, they have nowhere else to run or they just are desperate and they're they are sick and tired of living with the bondage or oppression or hurt or pain that they've been living with um, for a long time. So uh, with this, it is God is bringing justice to people who have been treated unjustly. There is an exposing of lies in all sectors of society. There will be an exposing. There will be justice coming for the unborn, for the children, for the oppressed, for the abused and the trafficked. There will be justice that's coming. And with that justice comes the harvest. Those people who have been long a long time oppressed and in pain and and under the oppression of the enemy of a spiritual enemy that has been holding them down and uh holding them back so david young david is a picture of the body of christ right now david is about to defeat goliath who has been taunting the church so here we are in that three days where you know, Jesus is in the tomb and, and everybody goes like, oh, you promise, I guess it wasn't God. You know, I guess that you, um, you know, you guys are defeated. Um, the same time, same kind of things that Goliath was saying to God's people. He was taunting them saying, you guys are puny. You are weak. You do, you're already defeated. You know, I dare you to come out and fight me. I'm so much stronger than you. Look at me. I'm already victorious. I've already won um, the victory. And so he's been taunting. Goliath has been taunting the church. But Jesus is still taking center stage. Don't take your eyes off of Jesus. Keep lifting up Jesus. So here we are prophetically at the time that we're living in, right now, the moment that we're living in prophetically. It's like Jesus is in the tomb. Goliath is taunting God's people. The Israelites are stuck between the Red Sea and the enemies coming after them, the enemies of Egypt coming after them. Some people, even Christians and believers in the church, are losing hope and going God, where are you and where is your justice that you promised? But the small remnant, the remnant that ha of the church that's like young David coming against Goliath, the remnant of the church who ha we have already been tested by fire. You have already been tested by fire. You've already been made strong through many tests and trials. You've already stood firm and you've learned how to stand firm against all the attacks of the enemy. We will be rising up with great authority in these days, in this season, to lift up the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee must bow, right? A huge victory is about to happen a huge celebration is about to happen. And here is where um, Dan woke up this morning. I think it was this morning or maybe it was the other day and um, saw the number 714. So actually for a few days, he's been seeing 714 in a lot of places. Now, last year, a lot of us were praying second chronicles 7 14 and so he knew that that was what god was directing him back to i'm going to read it to you we were praying it all through 2020 and i'm sure you were too um but i'll i'll show you where we're at in this verse right now the the prophetic time that we're at it says um god is speaking he says if my people then if my people okay so everything's coming against you but if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. My people turn from their ways that have been um, contrary to God. Then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land and heal their land. And so um, God, Dan said to God, like, where are we in that, in that verse right now? And God said, I'm about to heal your land. Like he's heard our cries. He's seen and heard our prayers. He has seen us humble ourselves. And now we're at the end of that verse right there. I will hear from heaven 
and will forgive their sins and restore and heal their land. That's where we're at right now. God is about to heal our land. And I'm going to show you Luke 13, 10 through 13. is another scripture he brought um, out that is such confirmation for me. Um, Luke 13, one Sabbath day as Jesus was teaching in a synagogue, he saw a woman who had been crippled by an evil spirit. Okay. Um, she had, she was bent double for 18 years and was unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, dear woman, you are healed of your sickness. And then he touched her and instantly she could stand straight how she praised God. And later on, Jesus is saying, this was a spirit that was oppressing her. It was an evil spirit that was making her bent double for 18 years. She was bowed down in shame and pain. And Jesus is about to set people free from shame and pain and strongholds that have had them bowed low and bent over, like maybe just uh, metaphorically bent over with heavy strongholds and heavy burdens and so much pain in their soul. Jesus is about to set them free and us free. He is coming to rescue his people from these strongholds. The script, one of the scriptures, so huge strongholds are going to be broken over people, over families, over marriages, over entire generations, and even entire cities and regions and nations. Strongholds broken in this season because that's how powerful and amazing Jesus is in the spirit of God through us. We get to be the ones that God rescues people through. We get to be rescued, and then he uses us to rescue others. There's a rescue happening. I can't get out of my mind the fact that this year is a year of rescue and reward. Rescue and reward. So here it is, Luke 18, 6 through 8. This came to me last week or two weeks ago. It's a story that Jesus is telling of a widow that was constantly going to a judge. The judge was unjust, but the widow was like, I have nowhere else to go. So every single day she went to the judge and she was like, help me, help me have justice against my enemy, help me. And the judge ignored her for a while. And, but then, um, just because she was so persistent and she kept going and knocking on his door and going, help me, help me have justice, defend me against my enemy. Then the, uh, Jesus said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Cause he goes, she's driving me crazy and she's wearing me out. So I'm going to give her what she's asking for. Well, Laura said, learn, uh, the Lord said, learn a lesson from this unjust judge. Even he rendered a just decision in the end. So don't you think how much more will God, our heavenly father who loves us endlessly, don't you think he will surely give justice to his people who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. He will grant justice to us quickly. He does hear our prayers. He does see our cries. He is coming to rescue. He is defending and vindicating his people. He is removing strongholds. Yes, he is. There is a huge victory and a huge celebration that's on its way. So we're in that moment right now that God is speedily granting justice to his people who cry out to him day and night. There are more prayers going up than ever before that I have ever seen in my life. God's people being bold and brave and courageous and standing firm on the truth, standing for justice and standing for uh, people who are, are oppressed by the enemy. So uh, 2 Kings 6, 16 through 17 is one more verse. Uh, I want to tell you because this is for all of us as part of that remnant church. We are David right now and we are going to defeat Goliath. He's going down. But uh, 2 Kings 6, 16 and 17 is, for, is our message to the people around us. Maybe the people in your church body, maybe the people in your neighborhood, maybe the people in your family, those ones who maybe they are getting discouraged because it's like, uh, Goliath taunting every day, or it's like um, the uh, uh, some of the the disciples going like, 
why why if he was our savior then why did he have to die or why did he die like why did he have to, why is he in the tomb right now you know uh for that short time okay so there there are some that are losing hope or are getting discouraged are getting weary but here's our answer second king 6 16 through 18 the enemies were all coming against elisha they were surrounding him even and Elisha's servant got up and he saw all the enemy armies surrounding them. What should we do? He's like, oh, my master, we have like, it, we're just so small compared to this great army of enemies. They're coming against us. What can we do? We're stuck. We're trapped. Well, here's what Elisha told him. And here's our message to our brothers and sisters. Don't be afraid. <laughs> Elisha told him for there are more on our side than on theirs and then Elisha prayed here's the key oh Lord open his eyes and let him see our job is to pray Lord open their eyes and let them see give them courage again show them that you're there show them what you're doing open their eyes to see God what you are doing so they don't lose hope and they don't lose courage that's our message to our brothers and sisters. The Lord opened the young man's eyes. The Lord is going to answer your prayer when you ask him to open the eyes of those ones who are feeling discouraged or feeling hopeless right now. The Lord opened the young man's eyes and what did he see? When he looked up, he saw the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. There are far more on our side than on theirs. So he was able to see that because Elisha prayed. So pray for God to open their eyes and to see how God is fighting for us. A huge celebration is coming and we need to just stand firm, take our authority, be courageous and be strong in the Lord, in the power of his might. And we are going to see the promises of God come to pass. So here we are. That's the, the moment that we're in. But 2 Chronicles 7.14 is happening right now. God himself has heard our cries and our prayers. He has seen us humble ourselves and he is ready to heal our land. Strongholds being broken over the entire nation in nations of the world. There is a test coming. The test that's coming now is for the world, not for the church. But we will be ready to bring in the harvest. There may be people who feel like chaos and feel like bowed low under strongholds, like that woman bent double for 18 years. There may be people who are sick and tired of living the way they have been living. There may be people who are fearful and very fearful and are like, how do you have peace? What should I do? It seems like everything's coming at me and coming against me. My life is in turmoil. My life is in chaos. What do I do? And we have the answer for them. So the test is not going to be for us. It is not going to harm us in any way. It is going to be for us to bring in the harvest. So we are ready because we've been awakened and we've been tested already and tried by fire. So we're ready. We're ready to bring in the harvest. There's going to be great, great joy and celebration um, across the entire earth. But um, it's coming, so get ready. So you, you get to be part of it. You get to be part of it. You and me. But um, yeah. So anyways, you guys, um, feel free to share this video. Um, encourage people in your life who maybe are struggling or they feel um, a little bit discouraged right now and um, just know God is doing amazing amazing things and um, watch from the beginning if you if you came in towards the end watch from the beginning because there's lots of good stuff in here so all right I love you guys